If you need to replace your master cylinder, there is something very important you need to do before installing it on your vehicle. Just like new brake lines, you need to remove the air to prevent a soft brake pedal or even brake failure. Today I'm going to show you the easiest way to bleed your master cylinder. You are going to need some kind of device to keep the master cylinder secure and prevent it from moving around too much. A little movement is fine, you just don't want the master cylinder to tip over while you are bleeding. I bought this small workbench and will use this clamp to keep it in place. Here are the things you need to successfully bleed your master cylinder. The master cylinder obviously, a bleeding kit, as you can see this has a lot of different fittings as well as a couple of tubes, more on that in a bit, and you will need brake fluid. My truck takes dot three. Now make sure you clamp a solid piece of the master cylinder to prevent any kind of damage. Also, having rubber pieces like these over the teeth can prevent damage too. If your clamp does not have rubber guards, you can place a towel between the teeth and master cylinder. I'm going to clamp down on this part here. This is a solid piece of metal, so this kind of clamp won't cause any damage. Once the master cylinder is secured, we can try different fittings for the brake line ports. If there are any caps over the brake line ports like this one, now's the time to remove it. There are multiple sizes of adapters in the bleeder kit, so you may need to test fit a few to make sure you grab the right ones. Most master cylinders have two different size ports, so it's not as simple as finding just one that fits. Keep in mind this is a plastic universal bleeder kit, so you need to make sure you use the correct fittings or else this will leak brake fluid everywhere. You want the fittings to screw in with a little resistance and then require a wrench to make it snug. If you are able to screw the fitting in all the way by hand, that's most likely not the correct fitting. It should not be that loose. The first fitting worked perfect for me. The second, not so much. As you can see here, the fitting just did not feel right. I would feel some resistance and then it would become loose again. This is a clear sign this is not the correct size. So I need to filter through the other sizes in the kit and find the right one. Since I already know the fitting I had in there was a little too small, all I need to do is match up the other fitting that's slightly larger. Once you find the correct size, use a wrench to slightly tighten it. This is going to be kind of tricky. These are plastic, so you don't want to over tighten them, but you don't want to have them too loose either. Just give it a few turns and then check with your fingers. If it moves around at all, you either have the wrong size or you need to tighten it a little bit more. Make sure both of the fittings are snug to prevent brake fluid from escaping, and then we can move on to the next step. Go ahead and remove the cap. Now before you continue, periodically check the master cylinder to see if it's sturdy or not. I had a little bit too much play in mine, so I'm going to adjust the clamp again. You want to make sure the master cylinder is almost straight up and down before adding brake fluid. Just like that. About as straight as you can get it without busting out a level. Before adding fluid, there are three more things that you need to do. The first is grabbing these white plastic tabs. Now you may be asking where these go. These plastic pieces will sit on the top of your master cylinder where the cap typically is and will hold the tubes in place. When bleeding, those tubes will have pressure in them, which will make them naturally move around. You don't want that because if they move around too much, you could have air into the line. The second things you want to grab are, you guessed it, the clear tubes in the kit. I'm pretty sure all bleeder kits come with clear tubes, which honestly makes sense because you need to see the air exiting the master cylinder. Just push the tubes over the ends of the fittings at the bottom and then feed the other end into the white plastic tab at the top. These white tabs can be placed anywhere on top. You can see I am just in mine right here. Do the same with the other side and then we can move on. Now the last thing you want to do before adding brake fluid is adding protection. First, put on some gloves. And it's probably a good idea to put on some safety glasses, even though I didn't. Then, place a paper towel under the master cylinder like this. Not only will this help with cleaning up, but this will also allow you to spot a leak more easily.
Once that's done, let's move on to adding brake fluid. Whenever you buy new brake fluid, you wanna make sure the bottle has a seal like this and that it isn't broken. Brake fluid is very hydroscopic. Bruh. Brake fluid is very hydroscopic. Scopic, scopic. Brake fluid will absorb moisture very quickly. Ta -da. So break that seal and start pouring fluid into your master cylinder. You don't want to fill the fluid to the top because the fluid will rise as you are pushing in the piston. Once the fluid is about right there, stop. Now adjust the clamp holding your master cylinder one more time if you need to. If we look inside, we can already see air escaping the master cylinder. This means fluid is pushing the air out, which is exactly what we want. If air is in the system, you will have a squishy pedal or worse, you will lose the ability to stop. Also take note, you need both clear tubes to be submerged in brake fluid. This will prevent air from entering back into the master cylinder. Now in order to speed up the process, I'm going to use a punch like this to press the piston in. This will force fluid in while pushing air out of the master cylinder. That noise in the background is just my dog Charlie walking around. Don't mind him. As you are pushing in and out, you will notice the level of brake fluid in your reservoir beginning to go down. That's a good sign. That means fluid is replacing the air around the piston of the master cylinder. If you need to adjust the tubes again, do so before refilling. This may be the last time you need to do this. Now refill the master cylinder, but do not overfill. Around there should be good enough. I'll show you why. Watch as I push the piston in now. Do you see how high the fluid goes? Luckily I had it just enough or else the fluid would have overflowed and I would have had brake fluid leaking from the top. The fluid level will go down as I continue to compress the piston. Oh, and if you notice fluid in one of the tubes isn't moving like this one, you may say something like this. I don't know why this one isn't working. That is concerning. But do not worry. Fluid will eventually start flowing through that one shortly. Just keep pressing the piston in. This is going to take some time and patience. Make sure you periodically check around both of the fittings to make sure they aren't leaking. And also make sure the tube stays submerged in brake fluid. If there is a leak or any of the tubes aren't submerged, you will let air back into the master cylinder and that kind of defeats the whole purpose of what we're doing. As you can see, the fluid in this tube is finally starting to flow. This took me between 10 and 15 minutes to completely remove the air trapped inside. So again, just have some patience. and take a break if you need to. Air will very slowly bleed out of the piston, even if you aren't pushing it, as you can see by these air bubbles right here. Now, air will collect at the top, so you can't expect it to completely bleed itself without your help. You still need to push the piston in, but if you need to give yourself a break or go get something to eat, go ahead and do it. When you are ready, jump back into it and force the rest of the air out of the master cylinder. At this point, if you don't have any leaks around the two fittings, then you shouldn't have an issue with them. However, it's still a good idea to keep an eye on them, and you also need to keep checking those clear tubes and make sure they are submerged in the brake fluid. At this point, you should notice three things. One, the air in the tubes are getting smaller and smaller. Two, the fluid level isn't moving nearly as much as it was before. And three, the piston is getting harder and harder to push in compared to when you started. All three of these are good signs and means you are bleeding it correctly. Now I'm going to let the rest of this play out without music because it seems like most of you do not like music playing in the background. Actually, let us know in the comments if you are for or against background music. I'll jump back in when we are done bleeding. Enjoy.
All right, that should be good. Let's take a look at the tubes and make sure we are done. As you can see, there are very, very tiny bubbles still in both tubes, but there aren't very many of them, so this is okay with me. Once you are satisfied with how yours looks, you can install the master cylinder back on the vehicle. I'm going to have another video coming out soon that shows this procedure. However, I do want to mention a few things. Make sure you do not remove the fittings or the clear tube until you are ready to connect the brake lines back on. Also, when you are ready to connect the brake lines, make sure you do one at a time. Do not take off both of the fittings and then rush to put the brake lines back on. This could allow too much air to enter back into the master cylinder, which means you're just going to have to put it right back on the bench and bleed it again. So do one at a time with a towel or some kind of container underneath to catch the the brake fluid that leaks out. And finally, make sure you bleed the brakes after you finish. That's all there is to it. If you found any part of this video helpful or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss a video from our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.